Okay, uh, Shalom, Shalom to the elect of the nation of Israel, which begins with the 144,000, 12,000 uh, from each tribe, 12 times 12 is 144, Yahweh Shai being the head of the elect. All praises and glory is due to the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, that's his true name, Bahashem, that's ancient Hebrew for in the name, Yahweh Shai, which is the true name of the only begotten Son, Bahashem, or Kakwadash, which is the Holy Spirit. So when we teach, we teach in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And we teach those names in ancient Hebrew, Lashawan Kwadash. Now, I just got done watching this video here by um, Elder Yawakanan. Elder Yawakanan of uh, GMS uh, UK. He's out there in the UK. United Kingdom, also known as Great Britain. England, to be exact. And he comes out of London. And um, the title of this video is Last Night I Dreamed. Bishop Nathaniel got sick and died and called on Yahweh Shai's name on his deathbed. Okay. So I'm going to play the majority of this video for you. I mean, really, after listening to the testimony of uh, Elder Yahweh Conan's uh, dream, there's really not too much to say, you know. Now, one scripture that comes to mind, let's go to the scriptures, is the book of Joel. Okay, we're in those days where, well, let me let the book of Joel explain it to you. Joel, the second chapter, I think it's around the... Uh, They have me format. Find the verse for you. Yeah. Joel, the uh, second chapter, the 28th verse. Now look at the subheading. It says, The promise of the Spirit. It says, And it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour. Th this is the Heavenly Father speaking. His name is Yahweh. And he's speaking through the prophet Joel, right? It says, and it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. It says all flesh. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Now that word prophesy means to say before. Your old men shall dream dreams and your young men shall see visions. So we're in a time where there's going to be dreams and visions. Now I honestly believe what... Um, if this dream should come true, I honestly believe what Elder Yahweh Kanan received was a vision. And um, if this vision comes true, then that would be a big shakeup, particularly in the IUIC. Now, what's heavy is Elder Pastor did a video. Right, let me see if I can find it. Bear with me for a minute. Bear with me for a minute. Let me see if uh, it should be in my history. Because I did watch the video. Watched it yesterday. Hey, it is right here. There's the video right here. Shalom, I'm giving all. There's the video that Elder Pastor did entitled Bishop Nathaniel is starting to capitulate concerning the true name of our Lord. All right. And um, let me just play a little bit of this video here. Okay. 
Shalom, I'm giving all praises to Yahweh Bashim, Yahweh Shah Bashim, Yahweh Kodash. Wa Shalom to the 144,000 and the rest of the elect out there. Shalom to you all. The reason why I say Shalom to the whole to the 144,000 and the rest of the elect out there because the only ones that's going to be saved are the elect that are in America on the continent or the country called the U.S. of A. And the two, you have the one-third and you have the two-thirds. The one-third and the two-thirds have nothing to do with Israelites scattered throughout the whole planet Earth. It's talking about the Israelites that happen to be in America. One-third will make it and the other two-thirds will not make it. There's going to be a lot of Israelites going to be saved. Starting with the 144,000 and then the uh, multitude behind them. So we could be talking about millions. And they're all going to be, the elect are all going to be beamed up into Yahweh Shai's ship. The angels are just coming to tear shit up along with Yahweh Shai. Anyway, that's why we always mention, use the, the term, uh, the elect. So, I'm going to entitle this video, and I got it right here. Bishop Nathaniel is starting to capitulate concerning the true name of our Lord. Bishop Nathaniel is starting to capitulate and you look up the word capitulate concerning the name of our Lord and let me give you some precepts focusing on the honoring the name of the Most High and his beloved son and also, when we say, when we do our openings, we say Yahweh Basham, Yahweh Shai Basham, Rakak Wadash, or sometimes um, Basham Rakak Wadash, which is the Holy Spirit, um, Basham Rakak Holy Ha the Rakak Spirit, the Holy Spirit. Okay, so I wanted to show you that Elder Apostar did a video, and this was yesterday, all right, and you see the title of the video, and he mentioned the word capitulate, all right, let's look up the word, um, bear with me for a minute, let's look up the word capitulate, because it's heavy because Elder Pastor did that video yesterday, and I believe it was last night, Elder Yawakanan had his dream, which I'm going to play for you, the dream that he had. Okay, uh, but first let's look up the word capitulate. Okay. Capitulate. And it says to... It says, cease to resist an opponent or an unwelcome demand. Basically, it means to surrender. Capitulate means to surrender or admit defeat. Now, you can't come up against the Heavenly Father and His only begotten Son. You're going to lose. Like Yahweh Shai told Saul before he became Apostle Paul, Yahweh Shai told him, it is hard for you to kick against the pricks, meaning you can't resist me. Yahweh Shai said that to Saul before he became Apostle Paul. Okay? So, Bishop Nathaniel has no recourse but to capitulate to the name of the Heavenly Father. Now, now let's listen to the dream that Elder Yahweh Kanan had. Okay? And like I said, if this dream comes true, this will be a major shakeup 
particularly at that group called IUIC. Okay, so let's go. Shalom, 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 shalom. As always, shalom, shalom. I want to give you the praises and the glory to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, or Akar Kadash. Yahweh is the name of the Most High God. Yahweh Shai is the name of the Son. Gabbana to the apostles and to the elders of Great Millstone. Shalom to my fellow Hebrew Israelite brothers and sisters who have been edified by the truth of the scriptures of who we are, the true children of Israel, and who the nations are. Today is February the 1st, 2024. February the 1st, 2024. So, I'm going to kind of go straight into this. Last night, last night I had a dream about Bishop Nathaniel. Now, I've never, ever had a dream about Bishop Nathaniel in the 15 years that I've been in this truth. Never, ever have I dreamed about Bishop Nathaniel, the head of IUIC. Last night, I had a really vivid, vivid, live dream that I was of Bishop Nathaniel on his sickbed, on his deathbed. Now, I'm going to give you the best description of the dream best detail as possible of what I can remember of the dream. And I do remember a lot of it, and it was very, very, very vivid. And you're going to understand why this dream was so vivid to me last night, to the point where it woke me up. At the end of the dream, I was awoken. Now, last night, the dream started with Bishop Nathaniel had been taken sick. Now, I don't know Bishop Nathaniel. I've never met the man personally. I have no personal dealings with Bishop Nathaniel at all. My only dealings with Bishop Nathaniel and the IUIC is if when they come up with the incorrect doctrine, when they are teaching opposite to what the scriptures are saying, we will remake rebuke videos of him. Myself, fellow members of GMS, the apostles, they will do rebuke videos of IUIC when they are teaching the incorrect doctrine. But apart from that, we have no personal grievance against this man. None. Zero. And that's true. You know, we're set up to reprove and rebuke. And, it, it, you know, anyone who teaches false doctrine, they have to be reproved and rebuked and rebuked. Okay? Hold on. Let me get the scripture for you. That's what the Apostle Paul told Timothy, okay? It is right here. This is what we're supposed to do, okay? Second Timothy, as being ministers of this knowledge, this truth, we're supposed to defend the gospel. Defending the gospel means if we hear any false teaching in the gospel, we straight away we reprove it and rebuke it okay remember in the truth there can be no lie it is written there is no lie of the truth so any lie in the truth it got to be reproved and rebuked okay this is second timothy 4 and 2 it says preach the word which is what we do be instant in season out of season meaning we're always ready to teach year round year round and, and the, the main part of the teaching is out on the streets, the street ministry, because it's a declaration of faith and obedience because Yahweh Shai said to go to the highways and the byways. That's in the book of Luke, okay? So it says, preach the word, be instant, in season, out of season, reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. Why are we supposed to reprove and rebuke? This is why the third verse for the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. Now, a great example of that is the name of the heavenly father and the son. You can't teach another name 
right? And ex accept, you know, and expect the uh, congregation of truth to accept that. Okay? You got to teach the true name of the Heavenly Father and His Son. Okay? That's part of the doctrine. Okay? So, anything outside of that is not sound doc doctrine. This is why we have to reprove and rebuke. Okay? For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lusts shall they heap to themselves having... Uh, heap to themselves teachers having itching ears, okay? Meaning speak speak smooth things. Let me shut this off for a minute. Okay? So, let's get back to the video. As I said, I don't know him. Anyway, the dream that I had last night I was actually there. I was there. I don't know why I was there. This is why I'm saying this. I don't know Bishop Nathaniel. I've never met Bishop Nathaniel in my life. But I was actually there with him while he was on his deathbed. Now, this could be... Activities. We had the name. And we on. called on the name. Cried to the Lord. Just stop this. I'm not sure why that started. One second, family. Activities we had the name. I'm not sure why that started by itself, but so anyway, let me go into this. In the dream that I had last night, I was actually there. I was there, I was holding Bishop Nathaniel's hand. I don't know why. I don't know why I was there. As if I was I there as an in spirit. As an angel, I don't know. I have no idea why I was there, but I was there in this dream. He had, he was surrounded. His bed was surrounded by fellow members of the IUIC, the guys that he breaks bread with on the weekly classes that he does. I think the main guy that he sits beside is Yawasap. I think his name is Bishop Yawasap or Elder Yawasap. Now these guys were all there. I think he had members of his family were there around his deathbed. And I was there. And I don't know why I was there. Because I don't know Bishop Nathaniel. And then it came to me why I was there. It was all happening in the dream. He had been taken sick suddenly, Bishop Nathaniel. Now, I was holding his hands and he was holding my hands. And I was constantly saying to Bishop Nathaniel, call on the names, Yahweh Bahasham Yahweh Shai. Call on the name, Yahweh Bahasham Yahweh Shai. Now remember, he's in the vision or the dream, which I really believe was a vision. Uh, El Elder Yahweh Conan appeared to him, right? And was telling him on, you know, Bishop Nathaniel, that is, was telling him on his deathbed, call on the name of Yahweh Bar Shem Yahweh Shai. Call on the name of Yahweh Bar Shem Yahweh Shai. This is while Bishop Nathaniel was on his deathbed. This is in the vision, so you understand what's going on. Call on the name Yahweh Bar Hashem Yahweh Shai. Constantly saying this to him while holding his hand. So he looked up at me, I looked down at him, and I said this to him several times in the dream, and I'm holding his hand, his bed is surrounded by his family, and as if no one else can see me. This is the thing why I say I, I don't know in what presence I was there, was it some sort of spiritual presence that I was there, but no one else could see me. That's what I believe. I believe Elder Yahweh Khanan appeared in the vision as a comforting spirit to... Uh... Bishop Nathaniel while he was on his uh, deathbed before he crossed over, you know, because as you're going to hear in the vision, uh, Bishop Nathaniel crossed over, he passed away. So as a comforting spirit, I believe, um, because the word angel means messenger. So that was the last message 
given to Bishop Nathaniel before he crossed over. Call upon the name of the Heavenly Father and the Son. And that reminds me of the video that Elder Pastor did. Where he said um, Bishop Nathaniel is starting to capitulate to the true name of the Heavenly Father and His only begotten Son. In this case, is His only begotten Son. And we looked up the word capitulate, which means to yield, to surrender. I got a scripture for you. There's a scripture where it says we can do nothing against the truth. Okay, I'm going to get back to the, to the dream. So th threat not. But I, I think the scripture is very appropriate to bring in right now. It is right here. 2 Corinthians 13 and 8. It says, For we can do nothing against the truth, but for the truth. Part of the truth is the true name of the Heavenly Father and His Son. Remember what Proverbs says. It says, What is His name and what is His Son's name, if thou canst tell? So part of the doctrine is to teach the true name of the Heavenly Father and His Son. And the true name of the Heavenly Father is Yahweh. His Son's name is Yahweh Shai. And you notice, right, over the, what, the last month or two, the Spirit been coming down heavy on IUIC to get into the name of the Father and His Son. Even at the camp that they had, um, I forgot what state it was, that one woman came up. And she kept uh, uh, taunting the camp, saying, what is his name? What is his name? But she did it in, I, taunting is a strong word, but she did it righteously. She said, what is his name? What is his name? Y'all saw the video, those of you who saw it. So that's not a coincidence. That is the Holy Spirit getting at this group. Look, yeah, y'all got a lot of the truth, but y'all don't have the name. Y'all are not teaching the true name of the Heavenly Father and the Son which is the most important thing in this gospel, the true name of the Heavenly Father and the Son, which has to be taught because those names are about to be magnified. The destruction that's coming, the destruction that Yahweh Shem is going to bring, one of the main reasons is to magnify the name of the Father and His Son. All right? And we've read that in past scriptures. The, the destruction that the Heavenly Father brought upon Pharaoh was to magnify His name. Clearly, we read that in Romans, the ninth chapter. The Heavenly Father, Yahweh, even told Moses, look, I'm going to bring this destruction on Pharaoh, and the reason why I'm going to do it is to magnify my name. Because right after the destruction, my name is going to be magnified. Guess what? The Edomites are the modern-day uh, Pharaoh. They're the modern-day Egyptians. That's in, the, that's in the prophecy in Isaiah, the 19th chapter. Okay, here it is right here. Romans, the ninth chapter, the 17th verse. For the scripture saith unto Pharaoh, even for this same purpose have I raised thee up, that I might show my power in thee, and that my name might be declared throughout all the earth. So once again, the great destruction that's coming, being brought on by the Heavenly Father and the Son, is going to serve to magnify the name of the Heavenly Father and the Son. So it's very important that we teach those names and praise those names. Okay, let's get back to the video. Not Bishop Yawasa, not the members of IUIC, not his family, no one else could see me. And to them, as if he was, as if he... So in the vision, Elder Yawakanan appeared to Bishop Nathaniel as a spirit, as a confident spirit. But remember what... Elder Yawakanan said, in the vision, none of the IUIC members that were around Bishop Nathaniel's deathbed could see him. So I, what I get from it is that Elder Yawakanan appeared to Bishop Nathaniel on his deathbed as a comforting spirit. This is the one last thing you should do before you cross over. But let's listen some more. Looking, and looking at somebody that they couldn't see. So I constantly kept on saying unto him, call on the name Yahweh Ba'ashem Yahweh Shai. Call on the name Yahweh Ba'ashem Yahweh Shai. Call on the name Yahweh Ba'ashem Yahweh Shai. And then what happened? Bishop Nathaniel started to call. He started to say, 
Yahweh ba Hashem Yahweh Shai. Yahweh ba Hashem Yahweh Shai. Yahweh ba Hashem Yahweh Shai. He capitulated. So in the vision, now again, it's heavy because the 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 prior video done on Bishop Nathaniel was done by Elder Pastor, where Elder Pastor said in the video, Bishop Nathaniel started to capitulate to the name Yahweh Shai, which means to yield, because Bishop Nathaniel knows all too well that the name of the Heavenly Father is Yahweh and his son's name is Yahweh Shai. But he teaches in the name or, or in the title of Christ, which is a total lie. Remember, it is written, there can be no lie of the truth. Christ is a lie. Jesus Christ is a lie. The true name of the Heavenly Father's Son is Yahweh Shai. That's his true name. And we're supposed to call him by his name if we're of the truth. So in the vision, right, in the vision that Yahweh Kanan had, Bishop Nathaniel started to capitulate. What does the word capitulate mean? To yield. He started to yield. He started to surrender. And it makes sense because just like the Lord told Saul, who became Apostle Paul, it is hard for you to kick against the pricks, meaning you can't resist me. Okay? You can't resist me. That's what Yahweh Shai told Saul, who became Apostle Paul. Okay? In that vision, when the Apostle Paul or when Saul was knocked off his horse. Okay? Let's get back to the video. And for those of you that don't know what I'm saying, we're calling on the name of the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, and the Son, Yahweh Shai. So he started to repeat it and call on the name, call on the name, call. So I held his hand tighter, tighter, and he kept and calling on the name. And then I started to say to him, you need to say this to your congregation before you go to call on the name Yahweh Bahasham Yahweh Shai. You need to tell this to your congregation before you go. I was relating to him that he needed to make this the last message that he gave to his elders that they need to start calling on the name Yahweh Bahasham Yahweh Shai. Yahweh Bahasham Yahweh Shai. I held his hands and he kept on repeating it, repeating the names of the Father and the Son to me. And then we had gone from we had gone from his deathbed to the funeral. He had passed away. We was at his funeral. It was a massive funeral. It, it brought a complete roadblock to Manhattan. All of Manhattan was roadblocked from this funeral. Tens of thousands of IUIC members was there. I mean, I could say maybe the whole congregation was there from all over the United States and abroad. The whole of New York came to a standstill in Manhattan at his funeral. There was another event going on at the same time. It was in the time of some one of these Jewish holidays. I'm not sure that the small hats were celebrating. If it was the Passover, was it was the Feast of Tabernacles, was it was I'm not sure what, what particular Jewish when I say Jewish, I mean small hat celebration was going on at the same time. So it sounds like it was around the uh, springtime in which his, his vision took place in, in you know, Elder Yahweh Khan's dream. And we're, we're approaching the springtime. We're approaching the Passover. So we'll have to wait and see if this vision comes to pass. But like Elder Yahweh Khan said, he's had dreams before and he, rem he, he might remember fragments of it and he wakes up with a headache. But with this dream, which I really believe was a vision, he, when he woke up, his mind was clear and lucid. Okay? And, and we're hearing his testimony now. So this is heavy, man. Let's listen some more. His funeral was kept at the same time. Manhattan was a complete roadblock. It was, over the, it was all over the news, the burial, this funeral of Bishop Nathaniel, the head of IUIC. Now, at the funeral... Now, can you imagine if that was to happen? What a shake-up that would bring to the IUIC? Because <laughs> that's a major group. That's probably one of the biggest groups, if not the biggest group, in this Hebrew-Israelite thing of ours. Okay? I was there again. 
like I said, I've never met Bishop Nathaniel. I don't know him. I don't know why I would have been there. I don't, I don't, I don't understand except the message that I was brought to give him. At the funeral, I held his hand again. He was passed away, but in the spirit, it was it was it was crazy because it was like I was speaking to him in the spirit world at the funeral. And I was saying to Nathaniel, Yahweh Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Yahweh Bahasham, Yahweh Shai. Your congregation shall now call on the name Yahweh Bahasham, Yahweh Shai. Now, the strange thing with the funeral was that Apostle Tahar was there. And I'm not sure in what presence he was there for. He was there as if he was. He was either there as a, like a consignor, like a counsellor to the heads of IUIC. Yeah, because it makes sense because El Apostol is Bishop Nathaniel's teacher. How do I know? Because I was there. Okay, now listen to me good. Okay, from the original camp that El Apostol had, 44th Street and Broadway, Okay, the two original members left from that camp is myself and Bishop Nathaniel. We're the only two original members from that camp when, on, from the onset, 44th from Broadway. We're the only two original members left. Okay, myself and Bishop Nathaniel. Okay. All the other guys, they, they like Bishop Yawasap, I believe he came later, but from the, the very beginning, okay? Because remember, when I came in, I was in, uh, in uh, General Johannes' camp, okay? And I left General Johannes' camp to join Elder Pastor's camp. I've told the story many times, okay? So myself and Bishop Nathaniel, we did, we did the last two left. At one time, Elder Pastor had 50 men in this camp, over, over 50 men, I believe, 44th Street and Broadway. That was, the, that was our camp, okay? <clears throat> so it would make sense for Elder Pastor that if Bishop Nathaniel should pass away, it would make sense for, in the spirit, for the Heavenly Father Yahweh and his son Yahweh Shai to give the IUIC over to... <clears throat> to um, Elder Apostle Tahar, okay? Because he taught both of us, myself and Bishop Nathaniel. We came up under, underneath him in his camp. So that would only make sense. Okay? Let's move on. Or he was either there to take over the leadership of IUIC. I'm not sure, but he was there in a very high presence because he was there at the head table sitting alongside or standing alongside, I should say, standing alongside Bishop Yawasap. Bishop Yawasap was also part of the camp. I remember Bishop Yawasap very well. Okay? He was also part of the camp. All right? Matter of fact, when we used to teach in Harlem, right in front of the, the state building, Adam Clayton Powell Jr. State Building, Bishop Yawasap was part of the camp. Okay? Let's move on. He was given an elegy, uh, uh, an, an eulogy at the funeral. And Bishop Yawasap was saying, we are at the funeral, and this is to the best of my memory, he was saying, calling on the name Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai. He was no longer calling on the name of Jesus Christ, Most High Christ. He was calling on the name of Yahweh, Bahasham, and Bishop Yahweh is very familiar with the name Yahweh Baal Shem Yahweh Shai. Okay? So all this lines up. All this makes sense. Now, if this should happen, all right, the passing away of Bishop Nathaniel, that's going to be a major shakeup for the IUIC. But wait a minute. Did not the Lord say he would? Amos, the ninth chapter. Let's go there. Amos, the ninth chapter. The Lord said he would shake up his people. Okay? 
And then we're going to look up the word Hebrew. The word Hebrew. We're going to look up the word shake in Hebrew. Okay. Um, Amos 9 and 9. Right? Amos 9 and 9. Here it is right here. There's a prophecy, right? It says, For lo, I will command and I will sift the house of Israel. See? Actually, we're going to look up the word sift. Not shake, but sift. For lo, I will command and I will sift the house of Israel among all nations, like as corn is sifted in a sieve, yet shall not the least grain fall upon the earth. Meaning what? The, the, the true kernel will not be lost. That's another title for the elect, because it's all about the elect. Now, is there... Is there elect among the IUIC? Absolutely. And we've always taught that. You go back and watch our videos. We've always taught that they are elect members among the IUIC. So the passing, if, if Bishop Nathaniel should pass away, that'll cause a great sifting in the house of the IUIC. Just like it says here in Amos 9 and 9, the Lord said he's going to sift the house of Israel. Right? Now let's go into the Hebrew word for sift. And you, you're going to see. It means to shake. Okay? Here's the Hebrew word for sift. No why in the Hebrew, right? What does it say? To quiver, to totter, to shake, to reel, to stagger. If Bishop Nathaniel should pass away, right? The way that Elder Yawakanan saw in his vision, that would shake, that would reel, that would stagger the IUIC, their faith. And a lot of them would just fall away. Smite the, as it is written, right? Smite the shepherd and what? The sheep shall be scattered. So those that's left, those that hang in there, that kept their faith, very well may be part of the elect. And now they're going to have to capitulate, yield to the true name of the Heavenly Father and His Son. <laughs> Check that out. They would have to capitulate to the true name of the Heavenly Father and His Son. They can no longer go under Christ. Especially if Elder Pastor, according to the vision, takes over that group. Because ain't no goddamn way Elder Pastor is going to allow that Christ nonsense. That's not going to be allowed. So, quiver, totter, shake, reel, stagger, wander, move. Huh? Make moves. Tremble. <laughs> it's going to be very interesting in the coming months, man. To see what's going to happen. Let's get back to the video. At the funeral, Bishop Yawasaku, I believe he, he, is, he is the second in command at IUIC. He always sits to the left of Bishop Nathaniel when they keep their evening classes on the weekend. He took the mic and he was calling on it. He was saying, we are no longer calling on the name of Jesus Christ. We are teaching and preaching in the name of Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai. And that would shake the faith of a lot of the members at the IUIC. That's Amos 9 and 9. That's the prophecy right there. Okay? If this was to happen, we got to wait and see. At that point, I was there. Like I said, I don't know if it was in... I don't believe I was going to... I'm going to... I was there in person. But I was there in... I could see myself there in person. You was there in spirit. You was there in spirit, and the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, through his son, Yahweh Shai, gave you that vision. If it should come to pass, we have to wait and see. If this if this should come to pass, then definitely we know for, for surety that Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai gave Elder Yahweh Khan in that vision, if it should come to pass. Okay? Because there is a scripture where it says, dreams lift up fools. But I believe this is more than a dream. I believe this is a vision, and it just makes sense. You cannot make fun of the name of the Heavenly Father and His Son and just skate into the sunset, man. You, you, that's one thing you don't do. You do not disrespect the true name of the Heavenly Father and His Son. You, you don't do that. And Bishop Nathaniel has been on video doing that, making light of the name of the Heavenly Father and His Son, disrespecting the name of the Heavenly Father and His Son, blatantly doing it for all the congregation to see. Okay? So you don't do that. <laughs> you, you do not do that. Mosai is not a respecter of persons, as it is written. You disrespect his name or his son's name, you're in for trouble, man. You, you, you ain't going to walk away from that. 
I was there in, I could see, I was there in person holding Nathaniel's hand. And when I heard Bishop Yawasak delivering that message to the congregation, Apostle Tahar was standing next to him. I don't know in what capacity Apostle Tahar was there for. He was there to take over. And rightly so. Honestly, uh, Bishop Nathaniel's congregation belongs to Elder Pastor. Okay? <laughs> the true men of that congregation, the ones sifted that are to be part of the elect, they be really, they belong to Elder Pastor. Because Elder Pastor taught Bishop Nathaniel. Okay? <laughs> so there you go. So it makes sense. Right? And then... Elder Pastors, the men coming coming up underneath him, they belong to who? Yahweh Shai. Because Elder Pastor belongs to Yahweh Shai. We all belong to Yahweh Shai anyway, right? If we're, if we're the members of the elect, we belong to Yahweh Shai. When Yahweh Shai comes back, who's he going to gather, huh? Matthew 24 and 30. He's going to gather his elect. Let's move on. As a counselor to Yahweh Shai, or was he coming to take over i think he was coming to take over okay he was coming to take over because uh bishop yawasap also came up up underneath elder pastor so he was coming to take over in the spirit that is iuic that he was going to become the head of iuic that they was all going to become under Apostle Taha, Makes sense. GMS, I don't know in what capacity, but he was there standing next. Or was he there for some sort of spiritual support? I have no idea. I can't answer to that, but he was... Well, I can. He was there to take over in the spirit. And if this should happen, it would be Yahweh Shai's wish. Or Yahweh Shai's... Um, it's what Yahweh Shai wants. And the elect members of the IUIC, the, the elect members of Yahweh Shai would, would have no, cho no choice but to follow. And all the others who, who uh, don't want to have any part of it, they'll just fall off. Again, that's Amos, the ninth chapter, the ninth verse, sifting. Remember, the Heavenly Father is always sifting his people. Okay? So if that should happen, man, that'll be a major sifting ground for the IUIC. Okay? Let's move on. Yeah, so he had to be there. Beginning with the heads of the IUIC, the other heads. Some may come along. It seems according to the vision that Bishop Yawasap came along, he yielded, he capitulated, and a lot of them won't. A lot of them will be like, man, I'm out of here, man. I'm not with this. The same elder pastor that Bishop Nathaniel disrespected, now he takes over <laughs> the IUIC. You could have a lot of heads of the IUIC, man. I'm not, man. This is bullshit, and and just just float away. And good riddance. They ain't part of the elect. It's all about the elect. Remember that. It's all about the elect. It very well may go down that way. We have to wait and see. Let's move on. And for a reason, Apostle Tahar. And then, when I heard the congregation calling on the name of Yahweh Hashem, Yahweh Shai. I held Nathaniel's hand. <laughs> Again, this is him at the funeral. He's passed away and tears were coming to my eyes. Tears <laughs> were coming to my eyes. And this is when I awoke. Because when I awoke, I had tears in my eyes. And this is what struck me so bad. Because when I woke out of the dream, when the when ya, 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 when Bishop ya, Yawasap was calling on the name of Yahweh Bashim, Yahweh Shai, tears came to my eyes mm -hmm. at the funeral. And I awoke out of my dream in tears. And that's the point of the dream that I, I, I actually awoke. Hey Amen. That was a beautiful vision, man. That was a beautiful vision. If this thing should come to pass, that's powerful. It shows once again that you cannot resist the will of Yahweh Bashim, Yahweh Shai. You know? And what I noticed about this video, check out the time stamp on this video. 34 minutes, exactly, 34 minutes. Now three and four is seven. Seven represents completion. That's the first thing that caught 
caught my eye when I watched this, when I saw this video, when I watched it, the, the timestamp on it, 34 minutes. Okay, and then as you watch the video, Elder Yahweh Conan plays a clip of uh, Bishop Nathaniel back in the past, a video he did more than 25 years ago with uh, Ben from the HODC, another individual that we know very well, Ben. They both did an excellent video of the breaking down of the name of the Heavenly Father and His Son. That's an excellent video. All right, those of you who are uh, new to this, okay, new to this thing of ours, you should see if you can find that video where Bishop Nathaniel and, and Ben, Elder Ben, breaks down the true name of the Heavenly Father and the Son. It was beautifully done. And this is when Bishop Nathaniel was in his right mind. Like I said, I remember a time when Bishop Nathaniel, I never knew he would morph into this monster. He became a monster, for lack of a better term. But I remember a time when he was mad cool. He was a joy to be around. All right? He was. But I never knew he was so filled with all this deceit and and deceit and conceit uh, you know <laughs> man that took me for a loop because I, I i myself was close very close to bishop nathaniel and if you should if you should pass away if 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 it, you know in the dream that elder yahweh Conan had if it goes down the way it goes down that would have been a beautiful thing for his last uh move would be to teach the true name of the Heavenly Father and the Son. Talking about Bishop Nathaniel before he passes away. That would be beautiful, man. But we have to wait and see. Let's listen some more. It's when the message had finally came across. And it felt to me, recently, recently, from the apostles of GMS, the elders and the apostles of GMS coming down, this is the message that we've been trying to get across to the IUIC members in that they stop that they need to be teaching in the name of Yahweh Bahasham Yahweh Shai because that was the name that was taught to their elder to the bishop Nathaniel that was the name that was taught to him when he was at One West and he knew he knew the name of the Most High and the Son Yahweh Shai. Very well said. I I couldn't say it any better. Very well said, Elder Yahweh Kanan once again is. 100% spot on with that. That's been the, our main message to the IUIC. Besides the other little uh, inconsistencies of their doctrine, the main message is the true name of the Heavenly Father and His only begotten Son, why it must be taught and why it must be respected. All right? <laughs> so what Elder Yahweh Kanan said is 100% spot on. As if this was his last, this was the last thing that the Lord wanted him to do before he took him. Makes that sense. he needed to get the message across <clears throat> to his congregation to preach in the name of Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, and not in the name of the Most High Christ, Jesus Christ. And then um, Elder Pastor said in his video, the video he did where Nate, Bishop Nathaniel capitulated, he said that, look, if Nate is part of the elect, the Heavenly Father going to have to bring a strong whipping upon him. Okay? Because that's how you become purified. That's how you become purified through chastisement. He'd have to receive a strong chastisement to be purified. And maybe that's it. Maybe that, well, he ends up crossing over. But let's say... If Bishop Nathaniel is a member of the elect, right? Well, in the, when Yahweh Shai comes, if he does pass over, he'll be raised up from the grave. Okay, let's go to First Thessalonians. Because remember, no one dies unto the Heavenly Father. We, we all live unto the Heavenly Father. Okay? When you die, that's not the end of you. Your spirit just separates from that body. And, and Bishop Nathaniel's body is pretty ravaged. It's ravaged from when he was down there at the, at the World Trade Center. You know, he tells the story of how he was down there to help with the cleanup. And a lot of people that was down there <clears throat> that took part in that, they're all passing away, dropping dead from cancer. I wouldn't be surprised if that's what Bishop Nathaniel has, that cancer has ravaged his body. You know, and his body's given up. 
Okay, First uh, Thessalonians, the fourth chapter. So if Bishop Nathaniel should pass away, and he's a member of the elect, right? When Yahushua comes, he's going to be taken right into the chariot. And we'll see him, he'll, he'll be in his right mind in the chariot. I guarantee you in that day, he won't be calling on no, no most, high and Christ, uh, most high and God Christ blessed. I guarantee you won't be saying that shit. Uh, First Thessalonians, the fourth chapter, look at the subheading, those who die in Yahweh Shai. But I would not, uh, First Thessalonians, the fourth chapter, 13 verse, but I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that ye sorrow not. See? So if let's say if Bishop Nathaniel should pass away, meaning he would be asleep, he would fall asleep. We're not if we're not to sorrow, because if he did that act, right? Let's say he did that act before he passed away, which is to teach the true name of the Heavenly Father and His Son, tell it to the congregation, and then tell the heads of his congregation, look, you must teach in those names. That would have been a great act before he passed away. That would have been that would have been something that a member of the elect would do. Okay. So it says, but I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that ye sorrow not, even as others which have no hope, right? That's the two thirds. For if we believe that Yahweh Shai died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Yahweh Shai will Yahweh bring with them, with him, right? For this we say unto you by the word of the heavenly father, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. So if Bishop Nathaniel should pass away and he belongs to Yahweh Shai, and you know, seeing that he did that act, which is to capitulate, like Elder Pastor said, and teach the true name of the Heavenly Father and His Son, even on his deathbed, to the members of his congregation, particularly the heads, and make sure, give them a strict warning, look, you better teach those the, the name of the Heavenly Father and His Son, right? If he would have did that, that would have been, uh, you know, that would have been a, a, an act of redemption for him. We just have to wait and see. All right. So reading on, it says, for the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, with the trump of Yahweh, and the dead in Yahweh Shai shall rise first. So he would be one of the dead rising in Yahweh Shai first. Okay. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds. So he would go right into the chariots, right? When Yahweh Shai comes back to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. See, that's how it's going to go down. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. So if the members of the IUIC should see, first see Elder Pastor's video, then see Elder Yahweh Conan's video, and then see my video. If that should happen, if Bishop Nathaniel should pass away, they are to remember these words. These words are to comfort them. Okay? So, let's get back to the video. I'm about to wrap this up. It was an emotional funeral. It was packed. I could imagine. I, I said already, the, the streets were, were literally roadblocked from it. It was all over the news. Everybody heard about this. Yeah, because uh, Bishop Nathaniel is a powerful character. I mean, when you just look at him teaching, you, you can see he's very charismatic. But the only the only beef we have with him is those names those names that he's teaches total bullshit. You know, teach the true name of the Heavenly Father and His Son, man. And stop stop resisting, <laughs> like Saul did, before he got knocked off the horse. Getting ready to get, oh, uh, he's a guy who loves riding horses, right? <laughs> Bishop Nathaniel, we call him the horse rider. You about to get kicked off your high horse, my man. You bet. You better You better capitulate. You better yield. Straighten yourself up. At least this vision happens for real. But I, I have a feeling it's going to happen, man. I, I, Because the, the brother Elder Yahweh Khan and his dream was so vivid. You know, and again, I know for a fact that you cannot make fun of the name of the Heavenly Father and the Son and not face a serious judgment behind that, man. You, you can't do it. I'm not sure what his sickness was, but he died peacefully on his bed, quietly knowing that he was able to pass that last message on to his congregation that they should be teaching now in the name of Yahweh Bashim, Yahweh Shai. 
Yeah, well, he was part of the uh, recovery crew down at uh, World Trade Center. <laughs> and he was breathing all that asbestos and then, then uh, horrific gases. You know, all that con contamination. That should have been declared a, a, a disaster zone. Okay? All them dead bodies and it's totally unclean down there. Even Elder Pastor, the spirit came on him. Show you the spirit be working with Elder Pastor heavy, man. The spirit came on him and said, man, we got to avoid that area. That was the spirit speaking through the man. He said, we got to avoid that area. And we used to go that, we used to teach around that area. We used to go down that area, around that area and, and buy food and eat. And when that happened, the Elder Pastor said, man, we ain't going down there, man. We ain't, we ain't going anywhere around that area. And we stayed away from that area. That was the spirit speaking through the man. You had the, the famous singer Donna Summer. She used to live around that area and she passed away from cancer. You got even now you have lawsuits, man, that you'll you, you, people are filing class action lawsuits on, on people that lived around that area, the people that helped during the cleanup of 9 11, because they're all coming down with cancer. So even long after 9 11 happened, people are still dying as a result of 9 11. Check that out. Dropping dead, man. Their bodies ravaged with cancer. And I believe that's what happened to Bishop Nathaniel. Okay? So the smartest thing he can do right about now is call upon the name of the Heavenly Father and His Son. But as you well know about Bishop Nathaniel, he's very stubborn, man. Very, very conceited, very proudful, and very stubborn. And I had no idea he was really like that, man. I have no idea why I was there, why I was the one that brought this message to him. I have no idea why why it was me. I'd have no idea. I've never met the man before. But it was such an it was such an emotional time that once the message had got across, like I said, at the end of the funeral, I myself was crying at the funeral, holding on to his hand. For what reasons I don't know. I don't under, I didn't understand that part, but I woke up with tears in my eyes to the fact that the congregation was now preaching and calling on that name. Yeah, so there were tears of joy. That would be a joyful thing to see members of the IUIC finally capitulate and yield to the true name of the Heavenly Father and the Son instead of this Christ bullshit. And you know that title have to go, Israel Israel United in Christ. That, that would be the death of that, that right there and then, man. And whatever I've been saying from day one, that the Lord is going to, you know, destroy that IUIC nonsense. Because the Lord's name is not Christ. His name is Yahweh Shai. You know, beginning of Elder Pastor on down, we've been saying that, man, from day one. So if Elder Yahweh Khanan's dream happened the, the way it happens, man, it's going to be something. And this is why we speak about, when we speak about teaching and preaching in any how about Shimi Yahweh Shai, it is so important to us. The scripture tells us in Proverbs chapter 30, verse 4, the scripture is quite clear when it tells us who has, who has ascended up into heaven or descended, who has gathered the wind in his fist, who has bound the waters in a garment, who has established all the ends of the earth, what is his name and what is his son's name if thou canst tell. And we know for 100% Bishop Nathaniel knows the name of the Most High. Absolutely. Now, whether or not IUIC sees this video or members of IUIC sees this video, there's got to be a message in here. Oh, there is. Whether or not this... Oh, there is. The message is to show respect to the true name of the Heavenly Father and His Son, to praise those names, to hallow those names, to treat those names with respect. And to, to know that the destruction that's coming upon Esau and two-thirds of Israel, the, one of the main reasons is to magnify the true name of the Heavenly Father and the Son. <laughs> that's the message. And also the message is you cannot blaspheme the name of the Heavenly Father and the Son and just walk away into the sunset. You know? The Heavenly Father is not a respect of persons. The, the Heavenly Father don't care who. You know, who does it? 
okay you won't receive the uh you're going to receive the uh, recompense the punishment is that going to happen to nathaniel is he going to get ill and die i don't know but this is what happened in the dream bishop mm -hmm. nathaniel got sick he died and he finally called on the name of Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh on his deathbed and he instructed his congregation that was his last wish that they should teach in the names of Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh and Bishop Yahweh gave that message to the congregation at Nathaniel's funeral. Mm. Apostle Tahar was there as well. I don't know in what capacity he was there, but he was there at the funeral. Mm. I'm going to play you a short video of Bishop. Okay, so I'm going to leave it there. I, I certainly didn't intend for this video to go that long. Hopefully you hung in there and got the message out of this video. Hopefully it was edifying to you, brothers out there and you sisters out there that believe in this knowledge, this truth. And in particular, you members of the IUIC, a big change is coming to you. If this vision should take place, if this vision should happen, there will be a major paradigm shift at the IUIC. All right, and some will benefit from it and most will not. They'll be offended and fall right out. Okay, so with that, hopefully you were edified and we go to the next one.